Mind Gap Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Justin, and Doug, is there anything about you that people are surprised to learn? Hmm. Uh, they might be surprised to know how big my belly button is. Like the belly button hole. It's a you monstrous. Have, I don't know that I've ever really noticed your belly button. You have nipples the size of pepperonis. I do have pepperoni sized nipples. My belly button hole is pretty big. And I guess didn't what? It's this. about to happen. You're going to see it. There it is. All right, see? This thing's pretty big. You do have a large. It's obs, you know what it is. Anytime I've seen you with your shirt off, it's been obscured by the the hair. Yes. So I never really got a good shot of like how big is the hole. Yeah, it's a pretty big yeah. hole. It's yeah, like you could. What do you think you could stick in that hole? I mean, uh, several M and M's. You know, and listen, they may not melt in your hand, but uh, they'll melt in my belly button hole. That's for sure. They gonna melt in there. Yeah, it's gonna be a chocolatey mess. I'll tell you that much. It's gonna be so, awful. What we could do is we could we could throw this out to uh, the Mars Candy Company and we could say, if you think that you can create a candy that will not melt in Doug's belly button hole, then you reach out to us and we will do this live on the podcast. We'll put candy in his belly button at the start and by the end, we'll see if it's melted or not. Or how about this? Put in the comments how many M&Ms you think would fit in there and then I'll try it and the winner gets something, you know, Ooh. gets a prize. It's like, guess how many like beans are in a jar, right? right? Like it's how many fits in now. Okay. So let's, let's, let's get the rules straight here. Mm -hmm. are, is it, is it how many are like, so you can run your finger over it and nothing comes like it, is it flat mm. or like, can it be a little con convex? I would say well, that's a good, that's a good point. I would say, um, and will uh, you remove the belly hair button when you shave around there? Belly button lint. Got it. Just found some in there. Oh, my goodness. I would say, because what I would do is I would lay on my back, uh -huh. and I, I'd, I'd put some in there, and as long as it fits, I guess it, I'd practical Doug's to kick it in here. Yep. Um, it's got to be like, because there's a little bit of a dip. Like, once your hand can kind of, like, go over the abyss and not, like, you know, Knocking trip them over, them out. you know, yeah. knocking them out. I think that's when it would be full. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So okay. put your guesses in. If you guess right, once once we have all the guesses locked in, then I'll do why it. Why we give this? And why record we give this it. Two weeks. Yeah. All right. So two weeks from when this airs. Uh, mm -hmm. Where's Where's my calendar here? Yeah. So we are. Uh, so it's March first is when it will air. So by March fifteenth. Four fifteenth. Yes. Okay. Yep. So by Lock March, in so your guesses, guesses by in, March 15th. By March 15th. And on the show on March 18th, we'll we'll go down. We'll, we'll yeah, when we record. Yeah. And yeah. maybe we'll do. Yeah. Maybe we'll do that. And we'll maybe we'll do a special, you know, like subscriber only, you know, video of me putting M&Ms in my play button. You know, that is 100 percent the beginning of an OnlyFans account. Like, right. like hard what stop. Some, that is it's called belly button Doug, you know. It's called Belly Button. That's is that the name? It's OnlyFans.com slash Belly Button Doug. Belly Button Doug. It's like, okay, what's, like he, it. what's he going to put in there? I don't know. Is it honey this week? Oh my gosh! Is it marshmallows? People are fans are going to have uh, hats that just say BBD. Yeah, BBD. It's like, oh, I, like I, like, I know what that stands for. It's like, no, you don't. <laughs> for you know what? So you know what the prize is going to be? You know how you can get people? <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> no. It's not what you think. You think you know, but you don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not what you think it is. It's you can have all the guesses in the world. You will never guess. You're, it. you're probably not going to get it because uh, it's 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 not what you think it is. You know how you can, <laughs> you know how you can get M and M's uh, with people's faces on them as like yeah. like novelty gifts. We need to get M and M's with a picture of your belly button on them, oh, and that's God. the prize we give out. <laughs> So they look like buttholes, Super. basically. <laughs> Why not? I mean, it is what it is. The yeah. brown M and M's. Congrats! Yeah, this is Doug's exactly. belly button. <laughs> look, belly button. Is there hair on this? Stomach. Yeah, it's authentic. You know, absolutely. Is there a little bit of lint? Maybe that's Doug hair. That's Doug hair. You're welcome. 
Justin, what was the question you asked me but to you? <laughs> Something that someone would be surprised to learn about. Um, ah, gosh, I don't know. Um, trying to think if I should give a fake answer or a real one. I give a real well, one. Yeah, you did. Why don't you be um, authentic, Justin, and stop worrying about what other people fucking think of you, huh? How about that? I'm worried about what other people think of me. That's something ah, that you'd be see, surprised that's, to That's problem to learn. number one, yeah. you know? Yeah, absolutely. I uh, I think most people would be surprised because a lot of them don't believe it. Because in the media, it's been portrayed one way. But I have Tourette syndrome. And a ah. lot of people are like, what? No, you don't. So I've, I've it's funny. I've had to defend the fact that I have it <laughs> to people in the past. Uh, You're like, no, you don't. You just look at them and you pause and you go, cunt. They're like, wow, that's a weird tick. You're like, that's not my tick. <laughs> it's just, a, it's not my tick. That's an opinion. That's just facts. Is what that's that is. Fact. Mom. Yeah, mom. <laughs> oh man, the times that we've gotten into it, Doug. Oh boy, let me tell you. No, that's a good point because I. It's funny you. because like I don't even notice it anymore. Like yeah. I completely don't even notice it. If you watch the full stream, you'll notice my eyes uh, going up every once in a while, and that's like. You, but again, look, I've had forty years of practice on writing this in in public so usually when i'm when i'm super tired or uh if i'm just alone in my home uh you know i'll i'll, I'll ease up and i'll allow myself to tick a little bit more but i've gotten it, it, pretty good in public to uh, putting a lid on them you mm -hmm. know what are your ticks so you say you look up do you have any other physical ticks uh yeah i mean it, the thing is they come and go like mm -hmm. they they like some will be with me for a while and then they'll dip away and i'll develop new ones so i've had um some of the worst ones that I had when I was in grade school, I would walk and I would stop and I'd raise up on my tiptoes and I'd keep oh, walking. Oh, no. And that just, man, Dude, that was a, a pain have fun. In the ass. Walk. Justin cannot be at the front of the line. Nope. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, 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 <laughs> or they, you have to have like a five foot buffer. It was like, it's like a <laughs> pandemic level six foot buffer yeah. between you and everyone else. It's like, don't get close because he'll stop. Don't get it's a whole domino thing. You got to keep your distance. Yeah. Oof. I uh, I used to uh, blow on my hands all the time and it would. Okay. It would. Uh, I actually. And this is the thing. <laughs> this is how far we've come since you and I were in grade school. I was punished for it. <laughs> oh, because I was, I was, no. I was the I was distracting the other children. Because you're so going. They, <laughs> I was. Uh, <laughs> okay. I would I would blow or if I was. If I erase something, oh, game over. If I erase something, oh. I would, I would every single, and that that's where a little bit of the OCD is tied in mm. with the Tourette's. Is every single piece of eraser shred, and had I would to be gone, and I would blow, and 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 so they had this partition, like a cubicle, they would put up around my desk, and I'd just be sitting there inside this thing, <laughs> and I'm like, even then, I'm like, this doesn't seem fair. <laughs> They're like, Justin. Yeah. We're sick of you blowing all the time, so we're going we're gonna to isolate you. Because <laughs> you and your fucking wind machine you got going right. on over there, like you're driving people crazy. Wow. <laughs> At least you didn't whistle while you did it. You know? That would be, yeah. Look, you know? <clears throat> I have a mild case. Like there are, like the what you see in, in, in films and stuff, that's a mm -hmm. specific type called corporalia. And that is where you scream out obscenities and you, there are people who have it way worse than I do. And I'm very fortunate. Um, but it has definitely presented its troubles along along my life's journey for wow. sure. Wow, that's yeah. I think it's so funny because I remember when I first met you, there were some ticks, but I didn't think much of it. Yeah, and then you were like, "I have Tourette's." I'm like, "Oh, that, yeah, makes, that makes sense." sense. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like again. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wisdom score, not good. <laughs> Perception, not good. Um, What's he doing with his mouth? I was Why like, is he making huh, those noises. That's cool. All yeah. right. That's yeah. cool. He keeps punching the desk randomly. I don't know. Oh, he's just that's angry. Just, that's just unfettered <laughs> anger. Oh, that's right. He hated the commute with the blue line. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Nothing made me rage more. Oh, my God. Dude, those that days. Was the worst. Justin would come in late to work. Every single day. And he would come in and he would be fucking silent as he walked in. And he would toss his bag down and he'd sit at his desk. And he'd boot up his computer. And it was like... Uh oh, dad came home from work and dad is not happy. And I was just like, we're Dad's not going to say anything. Again. We're going to whatever. Justin would just, he would take a minute and he'd be like, I'm really sorry I'm late. He just like very curtly say that. And I'm like, that's cool, man. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It, the do, thing do, is, do, 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 do. 
<laughs> and it would be it would be at least twenty minutes until like like things yeah. they shook it off, and then we and then it was no work got done. Yeah. Um, but no, it was it was the, the most fucking random thing because ev again every single day something it was there was a delay there was you know like someone on the track or something ran express and it it was fucking uncanny like I hated the blue line to this day probably my least favorite line to ride yeah yeah it's it's uh it depends on which one because I also remember like the brown line at rush hour was awful I went the reverse commute. Yeah, so I didn't have a problem with that, but boy, at rush hour the, when everyone was like getting away from downtown, I always looked at yeah. that like that sucks. Later, bitches! And it's like I got in this empty train. If you catch the brown line during normal, like like midday hours, the brown line is one of my favorite lines to ride because yeah. it's just it goes through some real cool communities and just that like it meets up with the red line and then goes away from it again. Yeah. It's just it's a I, I love I really like the the path that it takes, but yeah, during. <laughs> If you catch it going the wrong way during rush hour, forget about it. Yeah, no Absolutely good. Absolutely forget about it. Yeah. Absolutely go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. Well, thank yeah. you for sharing about that. Yes, uh, thank you for sharing about your belly button. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Well, gang, uh, speaking in case, of sharing. Speaking of sharing. Uh, where can people share things with us? Share stuff with us. First of all, if you're listening to this, thank you very much. If you're watching this, hopefully you're at youtube.com slash podcast. If you want to see more of our content there, head on over. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Get notified whenever we post something. We've got our shorts there. We've got some other little goodies that we have uh, posted over there from different different things that we do. I host a video game live stream on Fridays at 8 p.m. Central. Uh, we did Pummel Party last week, which was so much fun. Uh, Jared just got picked on just relentlessly. Um, and I, amazingly... In the first game, I won. Humble brag. Second game, uh, I just consistent third in everything across the board. Just a third place, third place in almost every mini game that we played. I got third place overall at the end. Like I was just like consistently third place. I'm like, this yeah. is this is I'm nothing if not consistent. So it was a real treat. It was very at fun. least you placed. I did. I lost. I mean, that's what it was. So yeah. oh, the, the public party used to want to be last because. You when at the end of the game, there's like a little like you know uh, standings. It's like first place, second place, whatever, third place, and then last place is in a cage, and then uh, you uh, basically can't run around. And you, you just can punch each other and kill each other like yeah. for as long as you want. And the person in the cage just gets stuck in there, and basically people just try to pick on you because you're stuck in the cage. So yeah, just don't be in the cage. That's that's really kind of what it is. So that's a good rule for life too. Yeah, don't be in the cage. That's you know in all yeah. aspects, it's no good. Uh, but this uh, this Friday. Uh, the March 1st. Uh, I'm going to be playing Helldivers 2 with uh, Noah and Alpaca. So I'm sure if you're into games, you've probably heard about this. It's it's shown up. It's essentially uh, like Starship Troopers. Um, you play as a soldier who basically drops down into like enemy territory and it's batshit crazy insanity where you try to do certain missions. You can absolutely kill each other. Uh, there's a tooltip that says friendly fire isn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it says. I love that. Um, yeah. And uh, uh, I played with uh, Alpaca and Noah a couple times, and uh, I've been on the receiving end of some orbital strikes, as they've been calling them in, and it's wild and it's fun, and we're looking forward to playing that for the stream. So definitely tune in for that. I'm also trying to put together a group for Left 4 Dead 2 in the coming weeks, so stay tuned for all that good stuff. Um, also, check the link in the description for links to our Discord and to our Patreon and to our merch if you feel so inclined to check those things out. Um, yeah. yeah. And now I'd say let's take a pause to uh, pay homage to the almighty ad dollar. That's right. Nice. Justin, number one or number two? Two. Okay, here we go. Uh, <clears throat> yum, 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 yum. Look, we've all been there. Another day, another cup from corporate. The Christmas party, birthdays, annual bonus, cups, 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 everywhere you look. Well, look no further than SAC. SAC stands for saving all from cups. And that's what we're here to do. Bring all your cups, whether they're embroidered, laser engraved, bejeweled, plastic, metal, mugs, thermoses, or anything in between. And we will take those cups off your hands and turn them into neato little knickknacks that you can re-gift. And no one will ever know. This Stanley Cup 
turn it into a little giraffe. <laughs> that metal wine glass with a linen straw, that's a set of Newton balls. All of your cheap corporate cups have a potential to be something wonderful that you can give to someone else instead of just letting them collect dust alongside all the cups you actually use. The best part, it's free. You just have to sign a waiver that says we have full right to make anything from these recycled cups. And of course, when we say anything, we mean a giant effigy to feed the wandering god of the shadow planet or to appease him enough to allow the mortal realm to continue existing. So come on, for all our sakes, cup our sack. So Doug, have you ever worn a mankini while riding a horse? You know... I feel like that's the best way to start a relationship. You know, like that's a great way to be like, how did you meet? With, well, with the horse. Well, Doug, I, I met Doug. He was riding a horse while wearing a mankini. And I tell you what, he had my attention. I got one look at that belly button and it was uh, it was stars. I was like, OK, that is a that is an endless abyss from which there is no return. You know, right. I, the first thing I thought was that man is uh, something else. And I wonder how many M&Ms I can fit in that belly button. That's right. If you're not familiar with what a mankini is, it's essentially like from Borat, that thing he wears that basically like it's a strap that goes around up over his head and then like just covers his balls and also is kind of like a thong at the same time. So it's like, you know, very tasteful, yes. I think is what we could all yeah. agree on. Uh, but uh, there is, uh, if you're not familiar with the world of equestrian, which I wasn't until I heard about this, uh, there is a rider named Shane Ross out of Australia. And during a, uh, literally, it's called a fancy dressed show jumping event, uh, he wore a mankini. Um, and there's definitely images of it. If you want to go check it out online, just type in mankini Shane Ross, mm -hmm. and you're going to get a good look at that. You get an eyeful. So um, this was hilarious to me uh, because this guy, Shane Ross, who is a pretty uh, celebrated. Um, competitor apparently uh he won silver in team eventing at both the 2008 and 2020 tokyo olympics and he claimed bronze in the same event in the 2016 olympics in rio so he's not he's definitely familiar with the global stage in the olympics so because right. according to this there were other people that were dressed up holy shit okay so my power went out i don't know if you saw on my screen the flickering <laughs> But that was the precursor for the entire power on my side of the street going out. Just my side of the street, not the other side of the street, not the people behind me. Just my side of the street. So uh, I was, yeah, I was worried it was either that your power was going to be going out, or that the girl from the ring was about to visit you. <laughs> that One or of the two. I'm having an epileptic seizure because I'm seeing bright lights flashing, and this is not good. <laughs> But anyway, uh, it was quite odd. Yeah, it was quite odd. But uh, so you don't know it, but we had an about a little over an hour in between when that happened. And my favorite part will be you'll never see this, but as uh, the video I'm talking and all of a sudden it just goes pitch black and here we go. Oh, shit. And I'm just sitting there in the dark. <laughs> well, and on my side, because this has happened before where for whatever reason, it's <clears throat> like something's glitched and you know it's coming like you freeze and then you go away and I just see myself. Yeah. And I think you said on your side, you see the same thing, mm -hmm. right? Like where you see you and then eventually it just sinks back up. So there's there's a solid like minute and a half of me going, all right, I'll just wait this one out. <laughs> all right. He's going to come back in any moment, any moment now. Maybe I should restart my side. Maybe I should leave the browser and come back in. I'll leave the browser and come back in. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's me having a conversation on my side. Yeah. Not knowing that you are just down for the count over there. Yeah, I was just like pitch black. And I walked down the stairs and now he's like, it's dark. I'm like, shut the fuck up. You know, <laughs> you're eight. Grow up. You're eight now. All right. You know, like, I'm afraid of the this. dark. I'm like, I've been up here all by myself in the dark. It's fine. But we just were watching uh, Into the Spider-Verse uh, on the iPad. So we were having a good time. You, so you sh if you were a, a mean dad, you would have gone, how do you think I felt? I was upstairs with the monsters under your bed. Right? Yeah. All by myself. Right? I was lucky to get past your room without I was, them I was me and me under. You know? What do you, how do you think yeah. I feel? You know? <laughs> Daddy, what's airtight? You'll find out on your prom night. So anyway, a man on a mankini. <laughs> 
A man on a mankini. A man on a mankini. Was, was wearing a horse. Was wearing a horse. <laughs> So Shane Ross and Ozzy uh, was riding a horse wearing a mankini. And uh, according to some uptight person named Kieran Perkins, uh, who was the Australian Sports Commission chief executive, said he was horrified by the sight of the three-time Olympic equestrian Shane Ross appearing in a mankini. Describing the incident as setting a poor example. Uh, Who fucking cares? You know what I mean? Right. He said he he was ignorant of the standing Olympians, uh, the standing that Olympians have as role models. And it's like, I look, this is if I were to see this guy, I'd be like, that's the bad boy of equestrian right there, of equestrian sports. This this guy doesn't give a shit. Yeah. Uh, fucking Perkins went on to say, uh, I know there's been a narrative that it's a good old Aussie bloke just having a little bit of fun. But what those pictures didn't show you is the picture I saw, which is of a 50 year old man, semi naked, jumping a horse over jumps at a community event surrounded by people of all ages. I think really the problem is that it's a man Ooh-hoo. on a horse jumping over things at a community event for people of all ages who fucking cares. About a whole, that's, about no, that, you know. That's the problem. Exactly. Is that it's not the yeah, mankini. It's, <laughs> it's that people are yeah. watching a man on a horse jump over shit. You know. <laughs> I'm sure what we've learned is that role models need to pay close attention to the impact they're having on everyone around them. Think about what it means for not only themselves but their sport as a whole. I hope we never see a mankini in public in that kind of environment again. Could you just be more of a 1980s like villain dad? Right, yeah. Right. And Footloose. You know, is that a twisted sister pin <laughs> on your uniform? <laughs> what are you going to do with your life? Like, come on, man. <laughs> Fuck off. Seriously. Like, that's the, like just this. This is the epitome. Perkins is the epitome of just rose of, of uh, just smelling your own farts. Like that is that I get over yourself. Yeah. We have to acknowledge that when you are an elite athlete, when you are a medalist and we are going for an Olympic Games, you do have a broader impact on the community than the average human being being walking down the street who does not get the attention and does not have the ability to impact the media. Sir, this is equestrian. <laughs> Fucking relax. I, I think you're far overselling the impact that this is going to have on the media. You made it to Mind Gap Podcast. Congratulations. Yeah, no shit. That's... That's a that's the beginning and the ending of where you're going to get. I also think this is the the thing with <clears throat> if you scroll down, mm-hmm. you see uh, you know the caption Rose will be allowed to compete in Paris despite the incident with uh, an individual. I don't. I'm assuming this is Rose uh, yeah. in a previous one where he's wearing your your traditional. It's like the waistcoat with the tails. He's got his you know got riding pants with his boots hat on. His top, top hat. hat, yeah, exactly. This and that's that is you know more akin to whatever the uniform is for them. It it it's all about and you and I talked about this uh, around Thanksgiving. It's the ceremony, it's the mm-hmm. tradition, it's the ritual, and I'm like, why why is that required for for this? You Let me tell I mean? you like, about the innovations that have come through in the the, the sport of equestrian. Oh please! Over the the decades, if not centuries. Of competing in equestrian, uh, there's been none. Who fucking cares? You do this because this is what you do. Like that's the classic thing. Like this is the traditional garb of someone who rides a horse and jumps over things. Hup, 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 hup. Yeah. Fucking get over yourself. All right, this guy was doing something fun. There were other people dressed up in silly costumes. He right. wore a mankini. Get fucked. Like, the thing is, like, was was his ding dong hanging out? No, no, it wasn't. You know what I mean? Like, because you see was, his butt was, cheeks. Was, yeah, awesome. Was Too it revealing? Metal. But like, in I will remind you in Europe, like uh, this kind of uh, attire at uh, at beaches is far more like like I just don't understand what the what the hang up is with like I understand in the in the environment that you're in you might not be expecting to see that but it, again it wasn't like he was he was you know showing the twig and giggleberries to everybody like that's no. he had his riding crop s- s- safely tucked away yeah. It's it's just, I don't know what you want. Like, it, it was it was for a fun, silly thing that other people and that's why they like they gave him a pass because other people were, were dressed up silly. Right. He wasn't doing this know. at an Olympic event. That right. That's the other thing. You know? And, w- look, was it is is it an extreme uh choice? Absolutely. Kudos to him for, for having the pun intended, for having the balls to pull this yeah. uniform off or this 
cast him off, but you know what are you gonna? Uh, you know, we're all we're all. I think we need here. to see more of this. I think we need to see more of this in sports. This would make me watch this sport. Of course. Well, I'm Sorry, just saying. Sport. Yeah, sport in, in quotes. Do you consider a question a sport, Justin? I let's start here's there, the thing. and this let's is, not get right. too far off of of our target yeah. here. All right. I st- stay on target. Stay on target. I could I do could I command the horse like he does? No. Is there a level of skill that he possesses that I do not when it comes to riding horses? Yes. Can I ride a horse? Yes. Can I jump and do dressage and all the whole? No, I can't do that. So there is an element of a t- uh, uh, having a skill. Yes. To to do this, um, you know, this goes back to all of the qualifiers of what is our mm-hmm. sport. In that capacity, I suppose, I just think you're really good at riding horses. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I it, this is this is one where I really struggle to call it a sport. Yeah. I, I could hear the argument for it. Yeah. But I struggle to gut reaction call it a sport. Yeah, I agree. I'm like, uh, I know it's not too common in our vernacular i know part of becoming an olympic sport we learned this we learned this about you know what it takes to be an olympic sport it's like it's got to be fucking done in like 70 to 80 countries or some shit like that right. so like whatever congrats but i don't know i, I just i this is this is definitely one of those we'll events go, we'll go back and, and say though that it does take skill 100 percent. these people oh, don't have like immense skill undoubtedly with what to, to be able to it's just the definition of yeah, what they're doing yeah yeah but like I, I, this is just a classic thing where it's like everyone's so fucking up their own asses about what this is that it drives me nuts. <laughs> and and I think there should be more changes in other sports. My first one would be golf. Let's stop pretending that golf is as prestigious as it is. It is not. Right. It is not for the average person. Golf is getting hammered and being out in the sun and hitting <laughs> balls. Like right. it is not. I mean, let's face, these guys are wearing fucking khakis. And fucking polo shirts at the pro levels. Right. And they're just like, oh my goodness, here he is on the fourth hole. Can he do it? And again, fucking talented people to play golf. Mm-hmm. I saw a, a clip of a Tiger hitting this ridiculous shot at the Masters. Like, unbelievable shot. Like, incredibly right. powerful. But why are we putting so much prestige upon this? Like, it's like, ooh. Uh, the sport of kings. Are you allowed to come to the Masters? Uh, let's take a look at your skin color. You are a little too dark to be allowed in here for the Masters. Uh, you need and to just, lighten up just yeah. a bit. Otherwise, you will not be allowed to attend in our presence. It's like, fuck you. <laughs> Get fucked. In 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 the list that I was putting together for myself when we were when we were thinking about this topic, I have the sport and then what I like like the rationale and the golf was the only one I just have golf. I don't think I need to explain this one. Yeah. I you <laughs> like know it's just what well, here's what I would do to the attire of golf. I, yeah. I would I would do it a couple ways. One, for the men. Same attire except for polo shirts, just giant cutouts around the nipples. So, like, their nipples are showing at all times. Yes. Like, just giant cutouts. Like, everything yes. else is fine. Or or just everything's fine except at the ass cheeks, the cutout of the khakis. So, just, like, you see butt cheeks. And you can't wear underwear. <laughs> Ooh, interesting. So, you have to see, like, some butts. That's... Th- so, golf is required. Butts are required. Butts are required. Golf. Or they have to wear Lululemon yoga pants. See, I'm into that one. Yeah, I like the. I like. I like doing that. I think they need to wear an entire Lululemon yoga, like head to toe. Why not? All decked out. Become in, in Lululemon wear yoga a swimmer's attire. like wetsuit. Be completely aerodynamic. There we go. You know, and yeah, now we're not talking about the speedo. We're talking about a full on wetsuit. That's right. Or yeah. just fucking literally athletic shorts and a shitty tank top. That's what you wear. See, that's and what, I a want, fucking I want like to go to the Billy a Madison big old route. floppy hat or like a yeah. sombrero to make sure that you're covered from the sun. I'm saying go the Billy Madison route. Everyone yeah. needs to take take a lesson or not Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore. Whatever, they're all the right? same to like me. Like just just flannel, you know, mm-hmm. fucking uh, cargo shorts, you know, flip flops. I would. I, I was time. like, let's 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 stop pretending. We're a good time. Let's stop pretending that this is anything other than what it is, which is dog shit. You know, for like yeah. just heaping some sort of prestige upon it because it costs money to go fucking rent time at a, some goddamn golf course. You know, yeah, go fuck yourself. Well, for the prompt 
that you put out there, what other sports need to take themselves less seriously. Mm -hmm. The first one that topped my list was Little League Anything. Ah. And it's not it's ah. it's not it's not the players that take it too seriously. I think those fucking parents need to realize where they are sitting. Yeah. What they're watching and what it really means. Yeah. Nat's gonna try some softball here in the spring. And Oh, uh, that's so fucking exciting. Yeah. But also horrifying. We'll see. I can't. I mean, I I don't think anyone's going to be really good. So everyone should just what, take it easy. That's the thing. No one's going to be really good. But you know there's going to be those parents that I've been training my daughter since she was four. Cool. Hope she's Rawr. happy. Hope she's happy. You know? Because <laughs> that's all I'm trying to do right now is find where Natalie is enjoying something and where she has. Yeah. Where she. There's an inter intersection between something she enjoys doing and something she's good at. And. Right. We'll see where that ends up. And if she, and when she when she finds it, hopefully she finds that, we'll just throw gas on that and we'll just. We'll go. You know, we'll. we'll Absolutely. Keep and, it going. And that could change. I yeah. remember my niece. She wanted. Uh, she wanted to take piano lessons. She wanted a guitar. She wanted. Uh, to do softball and baseball and this and this and this, or softball and basketball and all these other things. And like interest kept changing all the time. I felt like every, about every month there was a new thing that she was into. And she finally landed on, because she comes from a big basketball family, I'm assuming that is, you know, my wife's family is, they're Hoosiers, you know, they're, uh, they're all about the basketball. She landed on that and excelled at it. She was a very, very talented basketball player. But it took her a while to kind of get to, to, to kind of get to that point, you know. Yeah. But you just you you uh, you incubate the interest. You 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 stoke the fire and let them figure it out and whatever they want to try next. As long as it's not going to break your bank, yeah. You know, be like, yeah, let's give it a shot. See what happens. This yeah. could be the thing. I agree. Those everyone needs to chill the fuck out. Like, have fun, mm -hmm. enjoy it. Yeah. But these are children at the end of the day, so fucking <laughs> chill your tits. You know. Yeah. What else you got I on got there? I got uh, well, football. Again, I said the sport doesn't necessarily need to take itself less seriously. The fans do. Okay. So this is getting into because like the fans need to chill out. In what way, this Justin? Is, I, little, little League and football, I feel like. But, well, I mean, there's like people go, they, they look at football as like church on Sunday. It's a, it's a religious experience. People get fucking. And, and look, you can say the same thing about, about basketball and baseball. Like if your team. You can say is, the same thing about playing, WWE, Justin. You could. I don't think here's the thing. I feel like most of the fans on WWE know what know what the score is. Doesn't matter. They're fucking rabid fans. Well, yeah. They're rabid fans, but the football fans don't realize that this is a game. The football fans are the ones that are like losing their goddamn minds, getting legitimately angry that quote unquote we didn't win. I'm sorry. <laughs> what position were you? I didn't I didn't catch your number on the field. Right. Yeah. My, my, I saw a wonderful video the other day of this, this girl. She's like in her twenties. It's it's like it's either it's, it's it's New York like hardcore New York accents, and she's she just stands in front of the TV. She's like, "Dad, I need to tell you something." He's like, "What the fuck are you doing? Get the fuck out of the way! I'm watching the Knicks game." She's like, "Yeah, but I really need to tell you something." He's like, "Her mom's like, Janine." You know what? You're 23 years old. You know you're not supposed to stand in front of the TV when the Knicks are on. Your dad doesn't like it. And she's like, but dad, I need to tell you something. He's like, get the fuck out of the way. In nine minutes at halftime, we can fucking talk. Until then, fucking move. And she, her mom's like, what? What do you want to say, Janine? I, I just want to say that I love you. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> she's just like... <laughs> Showing how much they just are so into the game. They're like, you, yeah. you know that your father watches the Knicks games at these nights. You do not stand in front of the TV. You do not talk to him. It's just like, oh, my God. That's, was, I'm sorry, you said that was a sketch? That no, it was like a legit thing. This girl filmed herself doing it. She, stood, she like filmed I herself as she was it. doing it. She's like, Dad. She's like, He's like, get the fuck out of the way. I'm watching the Knicks. <laughs> I the other one, one of the other ones I had on there was curling. Because they're like they sit there and they yell at a piece of granite sliding across ice, like my grandfather used to yell at the dog. Yeah. Like they're just. I thought you were say something else. <laughs> he yelled at something else. <laughs> it was a like different time. It was a different he chose time. What he yelled at. I don't. Yeah. I. Who am I to correct him? All right? I mean, I didn't know him his whole life. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But like they're you know they sit there and they're just screaming at this piece of granite that's sliding across ice. I'm like guys, 
chill. What are, like you're out there with brooms, just <laughs> it's tough. It's tough because um, look, I like this. I, it's I Justin. Don't don't fucking backtrack. It. Don't backtrack no, on no. this. No, 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 no. Don't. I enjoy hey, listen, watching don't, it. Don't. I think they need to fucking believe chill, in though. yourself. Okay, believe in your opinions. Okay, so it's hard. It's hard to, when you watch especially the professional level, how seriously people take curling. It's hard to take them seriously oh, yeah. when you're like, yeah, the, the, the whole, it that looks like lunge. It looks when they like let go a of fucking it. sketch. It looks like a made up thing where someone's just like, ready, go. And they're just like stretched out and they're just like, ah, yeah. and then the people are just fiercely brushing the yeah. ice and they're like, ah, well, and, and the then, person who pitches it, they're just like, brush, brush. <laughs> They're just screaming from the back. And then there's two dudes at the bar playing shuffleboard being like, hey, this is what we're doing, you know? Hey, shuffleboard! Uh, <laughs> shuffleboard! <laughs> it's just, yeah. It's, I don't know. I think... Cur- curling always seemed to... Yeah. I, I, a, lot of those, a lot of those events, um, it's hard when you watch it and you're just like, you don't understand it or it means nothing to you and you see how seriously everyone's taking it and yeah. you're like, hey, can we just relax for a second? This... Can we take a step? Because I'm sure if you looked at football, like never looking at American football ever, and you watch it, and you're like, what are we doing here? Like, Yo, yeah. w- what's it's, happening? You know? The rules are bonkers. Yeah. Man. Basketball, you know, they're trying to get the ball in the hoop, man. You know, like yeah. just, okay, I guess, you know. Um, you just, you see how intense everyone is, and then you just apply that to something like fucking curling, and you're like, huh? <laughs> like, well, a lot of the things that I was going through when I was thinking about these sports, I was realizing it's not... Again, it's not the sports. I feel like I think you made it was it you or someone made the cut. They were like, yeah, I feel the same way um, about Dave Matthews oh, band yeah. and and the Cub, Chicago Cubs. Cubs fans, yeah. I don't I don't mind the I don't mind Dave Matthews band or the Cubs. I hate the fans. You know. Yeah, I used to really like Dave Matthews bands, and the fans ruined it for me. They absolutely yeah. ruined that for me. And same with the Cubs. Like I I didn't have i was like whatever cubs are fine but the more cubs yeah. fans i met the more i was like i don't like this team <laughs> well and i feel like i was going through these i'm like there's there's not too many sports that i put on my list here that the issues with the sport itself a lot of them are with the fans and or the yeah. or the participants like pickleball was another one i had on here it's yeah pickleball's become really big like it's a really the fastest growing sport in the and that's the stat that everyone loves fucking giving you they're like it's the fastest growing sport in the country that's it's just, fine. It is. I don't care. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's a guy that can grow the fastest boner, but, you know, who gives a shit? Why not? I yeah. mean, whatever. Someone out there has holds that record. Right? Fastest boner. Yeah. Congrats. It's a fastest growing sport, meaning what? It's just popular that people like it? Okay. Congrats. That many, that many What's its longevity, playing? Frank? Is it a fad? <laughs> is it going to stick around? Probably. They're building pickleball courts out where I, li- out where I live, you know? Out where, out where I live. <laughs> I'm both Canadian this, and Scottish. In the Scottish Highlands of Canada. <laughs> yeah, right. Oods in the Scottish Highlands of Canada. <laughs> I don't know what Canada is. Canada. I don't know. It's in Canada. Saying that. Canada. It's in Canada. Oh man. Uh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> random, la- random fact. I learned this from uh-huh. uh, the Basement Yard podcast. Uh, did you know in Scotland, they don't refer to the act of ringing the doorbell and running away as a ding dong ditch? Do you know what they refer what to it, it as? I do not. It's a, uh, <laughs> what is it? Oh, fuck. I just forgot. It's like a, a, a chick, a chicky melly is what it's called. <laughs> a chicky melly? A chicky melly. Yeah. So okay. imagine, I'm imagine, gonna... imagine a Scottish person. You know, they ding dong your door and they run away. And they're like, "Ah, no, it's the chicken belly." I can't do it. Do a Scottish. Do a Scottish. Do it. What? <laughs> those motherfuckers are doing another chicken belly. Say it. Go. What? What? <laughs> oh, those motherfuckers are doing another. I can't even do it. Right you now. got it. It's good. It's up. good. It's better than mine. Yeah. It's better than mine. <laughs> Lean into it. Don't give up. <laughs> Never surrender. I, I like the thing. I just, I can't get out of my head. That I was here. Ah. Ah. Your 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 groundskeeper Willie. Ah. Ah. Oh, the kids are back again. Ah. <laughs> the chicken belly. <laughs> I 
can't even get it out though. It's fucking great. <laughs> oh man, I fucking I oh I forgot how to do a Scottish accent. You've got me so in my head now. Hey, I think you did better than I did. I, I gave it a shot I, and I, I was don't. like I was like, hey! Wall. <laughs> I hit the wall. A hundred percent got me sixty percent of the way there, baby. You know? <laughs> it's all about the commitment. It That's is. what it is. You, if you do anything with enough with enough oomph behind it. Yeah. People will, people will, uh, they'll, they'll believe it. <laughs> they'll, they'll believe it. It'll be worth they'll it. They'll believe it. You know. Yeah. I, uh, uh again, do you have any other, do you have any other sports in your list? Um, golf was really the main with? thing I had. That uh, was the big gymnastics one. Okay, yeah. to some degree. Um, okay. because I hate how, um, I guess to a certain degree, um, anyone who takes themselves too seriously, I guess is what this boils down to. Like I've watched cooking yeah. shows where I get livid. At oh sure, at yeah. people that are like, I can't believe you did such a shitty job trying to do this thing, and I'm like, you know what? Fuck you. I was Natalie was watching something. Um, it was something about like basically making snacks. Um, I forget what it was. It was snack versus chef or some shit like that. And okay. the idea was like they would take like a traditional sh- snack like gushers, and they have to recreate the gusher. Like okay. as close as possible, and they would be so like from scratch or something. Yeah, or? they'd be like, "Here's okay. a gusher, recreate this," and they'd just be like, "This is terrible. You missed the mark on this. This does not taste exactly like a gusher." I'm like, "Hey, yeah. this was made in a fucking factory, out of chemicals, yeah. out of made out of non natural things. How about you eat some balls? How about you take take fucking chillax, relax <laughs> well, a little bit." That's just the byproduct of the uh, of the the reality show, the reality game show uh, culture. They're that, getting insane now too. Like I saw one that sprung up. Oh God, yes. It was uh, it was it was a combination of fucking. <laughs> it's called bacon bacon baconeering or something like that. They, they more or less were like you had t- uh, pairs of teams. One person was a fucking engineer. One person was a baker, and they would be given a task. The first episode was to make a cake like a, that is a boat and that it can basically float to a destination within 45 seconds. And they had nine hours to make it. Oh, my God. And I watched the whole episode and the, I'm sitting there being like, what are we doing with <coughs> you this? You gave them ratings, Doug. What do you we gave them what they were looking for. And I, I was like, this is insane. And there were like... that's. So many teams. You didn't even get to meet most of the people in the first episode because there's so many people. And they're just like, here they are trying to take their cake that floats and get it across this moat in 45 seconds. And then they were getting um, they were getting uh, talked to by uh, an engineer. Yeah. (laughs) And there was like a cake expert. And it's just like, they're like, well, if you didn't take care of the buoyancy ratio, which is why your cake uh, fell over and didn't actually float. I'm like, this is insane. We're taking ourselves yeah. seriously with this? This is this crazy. Is, this is television. It's this absolutely. Is, this is what passes for entertainment now. It's stupid. It's absolutely stupid. Completely oh, yeah. stupid. Um, so, yeah, this boils down to, like, anyone who takes themselves too seriously and tries to be too fancy is like, no. Like, I don't well, want to. I don't want to find it. In, you find it everywhere too. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 in like you said, it's in cooking. It's in you know uh, film. Uh, mm-hmm. Anyone discussing the film or film critics yeah. or literature or it, it doesn't matter. Pick a, a fashion. Pick pick a subject, and you're gonna find the people who you're just like, all right, let's your job. Dial it back. People will take their job way too seriously. Oh my god, absolutely. In my nine to five, yeah. There, there are people who live in. And you're like, I, that's great for you if if you get excited about this, but. Yeah. Let's not fool ourselves into this is not nearly as important as we're making this out to be. Yeah, absolutely. So, and I, my natural inclination when that happens is to absolutely make fun of them, like, sure. and not take them seriously and just completely ridicule everything about it because I'm like, I don't respect this. <laughs> I don't respect you. So, my only action is to make fun of you. So, and there's a, di- I do want to point out there's a difference between someone taking something too far and someone just being really into something. Yes. Big like if difference. If someone's got a true passion about something yeah. and they're talking about it with a lot of, pa- like, with, like, you, if you're you a fan tell. of something, I'm sure. not going to fucking enjoy it. You being a right. fan of whatever, any genre of music, a sport, a game, whatever, and I'm not into it, I don't fucking care. Cool. Go right. enjoy your stuff. But if you're someone who's mad at a guy for one event, decide to be silly and put on a mankini 
and you're like, I think he shouldn't go to the Olympics. This is absurd. This is a role model who doesn't take it too seriously. It's like, I'm voting for that guy for some sort of like worldwide president because that right. guy fucking gets it. He's, <laughs> he's, he gets the assignment. He's riding a horse. Relax. <clears throat> yeah. Relax. Relax. That's it. That's, that's the it. message that's, today is just relax. Just relax. And put on a mankini and tell me if yeah. it's worth it, baby. All right. Let's move on to our game. I'm so excited for this game. It's going to be fun. So uh, this is this this is a game. It's, it's called Explain a Film Plot Badly. It's based on a hashtag that went around who knows what social media is. But basically, people would write like a one sentence explanation of a movie of a movie plot and then they threw the hashtag explain the film plot badly so yeah. i have a couple of these i have seven right. to be precise oh boy all right i'm going to read now, are them. these ones are these ones that you made up no or are these ones that you culled from the internet i culled these from the internet Okay. I did not have the time nor the creative energy to do this myself. Okay. Besides, I just these want to were, know what we're dealing these with. These were yeah. infinitely more funny than I think I could have come up with. I dig it. So dig I'm it. going to read this, and Justin's objective is going to be to try to guess this. Now, I will say this beyond the shadow of a doubt. You may not have seen these, but you know what these are. Got it. I, okay. would, I would say you've probably seen six of the seven of these, possibly eight. Eight of the seven? That's right. I fucking right. said what I said. That's right. You're doing Recognize. Justin math now. That's right. All yeah. right. Are you ready, Justin? I'm born ready. Let's do okay, this. Okay. First one. A love triangle between an 18-year-old girl, a 100-year-old guy, and a dog. <laughs> what is oh, that it's movie? So, it's so... It's such a bad description. I love it. I was so ready for like a legitimate description, and this is like absolutely wonderful. I love say it again. A love triangle between a love triangle between an eighteen year old girl, a hundred year old guy, and a dog. And a dog. A hundred year old guy. Eighteen year old girl, a hundred year old guy, and a dog. Uh <clears throat> oh my god. Uh when you know what it is, it's like this is obvious. I was like oh, I I thought these were going to be too easy. Yeah. That's what I thought. No, no. But then I'm well, like, the when you don't know, you're like, what the fuck? Well, this is like the guess in 10 where yes. your brain is like, just like, oh my God, it could be it, literally any movie. And you're like, right. what? So the first thing you do is you start and you go, okay, well, what movie has uh, a young girl, old guy, and a dog that are yeah. maybe going on an adventure? And then you're like, well, Love Triangle, what does that mean? Like, yeah. And you also yeah. have to understand uh, that there's some cheekiness to this as well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right, right. So, like, the first thing I was I want to say is up, but like that mm -hmm. little kid is not a girl and also not eighteen. So mm -hmm. that's two of the three. Yeah, uh, but that doesn't work. That's um, good deduction right there. Can you give me a clue? It was a massive, me, like a massive hit hit, and it's it's a it's several movies series. Oh, it was a series. It was a series. Oh man, god damn. The ladies um, were all about it. <laughs> Twilight. Yeah, the Twilight the Saga. The Twilight Saga. That's right. Oh, my God. The okay. dog bit all is right. the I one where you're like, uh-oh. Here we go. Okay, know. we're loosening my brain up here. I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm getting into it. Let's, yeah. let's do this. All right, second one. It's a short one, so you got you got every word matters here. Okay, you ready? Number two, yeah. ball is life. Ball is is life yes it's not ted lasso are nope. we doing okay these are movies we're not doing serious these are movies okay these are all movies ball is life ball is life ball is i mean something about the sun does it have to do with the sun no okay uh how about the sun no <laughs> okay all right not s-u-n or s-o-n either one okay <laughs> Uh, ball is life. Ball is life. This is so. This is so hard. This I can feel it. So I can feel it. The, oh. Like you're just like I don't know, man. Like just don't overthink <laughs> it. Don't overthink it. If you don't know, fire something out. Like, uh, um, uh, uh, Armageddon. Okay, cool, cool. Castaway. Ball Wilson is life. 
Okay. Yeah. I, I don't like that one, but okay. That's fair. That's I'll fair. Take, I'll take the Twilight Here's one. Here's the thing. That one is Here's sus. the thing. Yeah. You, you don't have to like it, okay? Here's the, <laughs> that's not a requisite you just for this. Guess it. You just got to guess it. That's right. <laughs> and I'll admit, that one's kind of weak, like, for, for what mm-hmm. it is. But when you think about Castaway, I'm like, that ball meant the world to him, man. You know? Well, that's son! It, you know? Ball is friend might have been better, but... That was his life. That helped him survive. That you know? is, yeah. You're right, All right. You're right. Here we go. Number three. Right. Two idiots fight over another man's wife at a ski resort. Oh, Dumb and Dumber. Yeah! Bam, 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 bam. Forget about it. One Man, of my you favorites. Are all yeah. over that one. Nice. All right, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Group spends nine hours returning jewelry. <laughs> That's Lord of the Rings. It is Lord of the Rings. It's Lord of the Rings. <laughs> that's that might be the best one yet. That's really good. That one's uh, that one's solid. <laughs> All right, number five. A drug crazed lunatic slowly kills children in front of their parents one by one. A drug crazed lunatic <laughs> slowly drug- kills. A drug crazed slowly- lunatic slowly kills children in front of their parents one by one. <laughs> in front of their parents. A drug. Okay, hold on. A drug crazed lunatic. Uh, Patch Adams. <laughs> nope. There's no. <laughs> okay. It's uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> there it is. All right. Yep. Yep. That makes sense. That makes sense. That's a good one. Yeah. I'll accept it's, that. It's because without the context, you're like, this is like a horror movie. You're like, no, actually, it's a kid's movie. <laughs> Well, that's that's the first thing I went. I'm like, okay, Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, you know, Friday the 13th. I was like, what? But like Nightmare on Elm Street, he kills them in their dreams. And I don't mm-hmm. think he's drug addled. So I'm like, but then I had that thought. I'm like, no, no, no. It's throwing you off. Mm-hmm. Like it's, you, you you flip the genre and that's yeah. how you get you. And you're like, oh, yeah. what's a kid's movie? <laughs> right. All right, Patch here Adams. we go. Number yeah. six, friend zoned for three decades. Girl finally likes him. She dies. <laughs> the Notebook. Nope. Ah, that's a good guess. No. That's a good I've guess. I've never seen though. it, but I I was like hey. actually a very good guess. It's actually Forrest Gump. Oh, <laughs> yep, yep. I, and again, makes sense now that I hear it. It makes sense. <laughs> All right, last Here one. Cancer survivor never loses his sense of humor. Justin's wiping his face. He knows it. He knows it in his heart of hearts. He can feel it down in his plums. <laughs> Cancer survivor never loses his sense of humor. Yep. Deadpool. Yes! 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 I was like, if I tell you this, you're going to be so fucking pissed. You're going to be uh, so yeah. pissed. Well, here, I was, the first thing I went to was too literal. And that's, it. it's easy to have your brain, like your brain wants to go to the very literal. So what was that, uh, the Seth Rogen one where they, didn't he play oh, stand up? yeah, yeah. I forget what that was uh, called. Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Was yeah, 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 yeah. One of them, they shaved their head. So I'm like, well, maybe that, but I'm like, that's way It was way like 50-50 or something like that. I don't remember what it was I called. I think yeah. you're right. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, yeah. yeah. That's, that's actually that's was funny. a good one too, but you're like, wait, no, I got to flip this. Like, what is yeah, it? Yeah, I'm like, this, that's too literal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The picture with well this was done. great because it was just Deadpool laying in front of the fireplace. I was like, "Of course, yep. that's what it is." Of course. So, well done. You did a really good job, man. All things considered, excellent work. Way to go. I don't. I didn't keep count, but I feel like I got at least three of those. You got one. You got two. You got three. You got. You got four. Four out of seven. All right. That's pretty good. That's just more than right. half. So. Yes. Woo woo! Let's give it up to Justin. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> Man, Justin was it's, so, it's so short and punctuated. I don't yeah. like it. It's every time, man. It's about as yeah. good as I'm gonna come. You know? <laughs> yeah. That, but it's what, like pow. It cuts of, right through the. It's yeah. so quick too. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh. No one. No one suspects it. Justin. Cool. Yes. What do you got to recommend this week? I am gonna recommend. Uh, it's a documentary on. Uh, I believe it's on Netflix. It's called American Symphony. Uh, John Baptiste. Um, it's he's creating. He set out to to rewrite and redefine what it what a symphony is, and wanted to you know kind of show that it didn't have to be stuffy and it didn't have to be everything that we know a symphony to be, like the old school European style of symphony. So he set out to write the great American symphony, and as he was doing this, uh, his wife relapsed with her leukemia, uh, and it it came back very aggressively. And this documentary morphed into something completely different. The day that he found out in 2002, 
it was either 2020 or 2021, I think, the day he found out that he was nominated for 11 Grammy Awards was the same day that she, her cancer came back. Yeah. And so it's like like watching these high highs, like he's writing this symphony that he's going to perform at Carnegie Hall. He's on the Colbert show. He's nominated for 11 Grammys. He's th like, everything's going up for him. And then she gets this life-threatening thing that comes back and she's in the hospital and he's has to tour, but he has to come back and be with her. And he like, so it's this, it's, it's really, it's a beautiful slice of life. Like it's, it's heartbreaking. It's beautiful. It's uh, uplifting. It's, it's kind of all the emotions. Um, but watching, watching someone go through this and you're just like, man, like everyone, everyone's got a thing they're going through. And it just, it puts things into perspective in a really beautiful way. And, uh, what was really cool is that he also scored, obviously, a lot of the documentary, too. Cool. And the song it ends on uh, is a lullaby. So when she was sick the first time, he was writing a bunch of lullabies for her because it was the only thing that would help her go to sleep in the hospital. And one of the themes of one of the lullabies ended up being kind of the theme of the movie. And it's just from a musical, if you like music, uh, you know, if you like just, you know, uh, true you know just beautiful story like it, it has something for everyone so i would strongly recommend watching american symphony uh it is it is one of the best documentaries i've seen in a long time so, where can you watch it i believe it is on netflix okay cool let I'll me just double check, check that, that while you give your recommendation i'm gonna do something that's equally as serious it's a board game called turtle splash um okay. and it's a new game i got to natalie for her birthday and it's an awesome blend of memory game which i am terrible at now as a, an adult but also dexterity so the way okay. that it works is there's this little pond like a little, little little pond thing and you you have a little token of a turtle and the idea is to flick the turtle and get it to land on the pond depending on where it's it like lands curling. kind of except way cooler and not as serious uh, you flick it and you try to get it to land in a spot. And depending on where it lands will then allow you to flip up a certain number of tiles that are face down. Okay. And so all you all have individual, individual cards. And on those cards, there's like three rows with animals. And you have to find the animals in each row in order. And the first person to complete all the rows wins. And the only way you can do that is by flipping over the tiles and be like, cool, I found this one. I can move along and so on and so forth. So you can be really good at memory, but if you're bad at dexterity and flicking stuff, you're not going to do very well. Okay. So okay. Um, there's times where like I didn't, I would keep flipping over the same goddamn tile. I'm like, why am I flipping this one over? I know what this is, but I forget instantly as soon as it's done. But I yeah. would land several where I get like three that I could flip over. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like super cool. So it's a great game. It's short. It's fun. It's an awesome game. I think kids can play it. Adults can play it. I think it's super cool. Uh, check it out wherever you can find your board games. Turtle Splash. Yeah. I fucking love it. Turtle fuck splash it. It is. I fucking love it. And Canada. <laughs> Wait, what is it? The the ch chicky, chicky belly, chicky belly. <laughs> I fucking love it. Chicky belly, <laughs> freedom. Canada. Um, Canada. <laughs> Canada will still will forever be. <laughs> Where are you off to, laddie? Canada. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you're not like the other Scottish. Oh. You're from the Canada. <laughs> Oh fucking it! Oh. Uh, it is on Wikipedia. Uh, it's on Wikipedia. Wikipedia. It is Christ. Wikipedia. Wikipedia. <laughs> uh, no, it's uh, it is on Netflix. Cool. American. Good to know. So there you go. Awesome, yeah. gang. Thanks so much for hanging out with us and putting up with me, even though my power went out. Uh, special thanks to Justin for that. Be sure to check us out on all our social media at MindGap Podcast. Uh, be sure to check us out youtubecom slash Podcast. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think about things that are taken too seriously. What do you think? Did we hit them all? Did we miss some? What would you do to make them less serious? To let them chool, chool the toots. Um, having a hard time tonight. Uh, check the link in the description for <laughs> a link to our Discord. Be part of the family. Uh, check out links to our merch, to Patreon. Also, I live stream on Fridays at 8 p.m. Central. Be sure to tune into that and check out Justin online as well. 
on Instagram and uh, just Instagram at Justin underscore Michael spelled M-I-K-E-L. It's the fun way of spelling it. And while you're in the online realm, anywhere where you can find and consume quality podcasts, you'll be able to find and consume us. And we would love it if you did. Uh, share, rate, review, subscribe, all those things. The big one, though, is sharing. Please let people know that we exist. It's the only way we're going to grow, and we really do appreciate it. So thank you ahead of time. And because I thanked you, that means you have to do it. No takesies, backsies. Yep. I got you there. That's a technicality is what they call it in the legal sector. Love and Improv Film uh, on Instagram, loveandimprovfilm.com, twoeastaith.com, and twoeastaith on all social medias. Woo! Uh, with that, Woo! I'll say, Justin, thank you. Doug, Liss, thank you. And to all our listeners and our viewers, thank you. And you all have a dandy fucking week.